how to avoid witch trials. So, you've just heard this episode's title. Oddly enough, though, there are some scenarios where it may be misleading. You see, not all accused witches even face trials. This actually happened recently. Yes, that old and vile practice of murdering people accused of witchcraft is still happening in the year 2022. In some places, I guess you might be able to take a selfie while burning a witch. That sounds like me making a sick, tasteless joke, but it's actually eerily plausible. This has been a problem in some rural areas of India, apparently. So here's a story from the India Times, and I have checked for other sources too, just to make sure at least some other news organizations say this has happened. Anyway, there's a headline from the India Times that states, Woman branded as witch killed in temple in Gujarat. And this is from October 2021, last year. So, it, here's a quote from the article. The 30-year-old mother of three children was murdered in cold blood in the presence of her family, or, sorry, her husband, by five persons, including two of her brothers-in-law. The couple were married for ten years and had three minor children and were earning their livelihood working as agricultural, agricultural laborers. So, apparently a black... You know, like a black magician, black magic, immediately teamed Ramila, or termed Ramila is her name, as a witch directing people standing at the spot to kill her. Before anything could be reasoned, people started acting on the black magician's advice and resorted to thrashing the woman mercilessly with iron chains bo boiled in hot water continuously for almost two hours until she lay dead on the spot. So, yeah, this still happens in the world, just in case you were curious. So I know some patriotic Americans out there might be thinking, okay, that's that's in India. That couldn't happen here, right? USA, USA. Well, have you ever heard of a place called Salem, Massachusetts? If that's too old school for you, there's a headline from 2022 in The Independent. It's talking about Pastor Greg Locke. And it says, Pastor Greg Locke threatens to dox witches that infiltrated wife's Bible book club. With the subheadline, the pastor was one of Donald Trump's biggest supporters until the former president encouraged people to take the COVID-19 vaccine. Specifically, Locke said, and you can find the actual clip of this online, he said, We got first and last names of six witches that are in our church. And you know that's and you know what's strange? Three of you are in the room right now, he promised the crowd. So yes, what are some ways we can potentially avoid witch trials? Well, let's get to some basics here first. When you think of witches, what comes to mind? Maybe a brooding, green-skinned, wart-nosed crone in a dungeon-like room with its walls of enchantment wrought with green smoke, the human blood of the helpless strewing the walls, old spirits rejoicing to drink of it, the abode of the ancient and cruel. You know, those are like the, the stereotypical witch images, I suppose. Uh, obviously a cauldron, maybe a black cat. Maybe they fly around on a broomstick and, <laughs> you know, ki kidnap Dorothy's dog. All that kind of stuff. That's something people see and say, okay, it must be destroyed. But there's just one little problem. I've never seen a real live witch, have you? Never seen anybody cast any spells or turn anyone into frogs. So, wh where do people learn this stuff? Does that have any basis in reality whatsoever? Or has it always been made up? Reality lies so deep, and lies so deep, that not only do we not yet know it, but there is no possible way we can ever truly know it. Demons and witches are all extraordinary, 
dishonest claims, though, that much I do know. You know, I mean, even though, yes, reality will always have some sort of thick layer of fog over practically anything, e even the things that you understand can still be confusing, you know, like if you're in a certain mindset. I, I guess if you dig deep enough. But anyway, we know that demons and witches are not for factual, nuanced, and compassionate people. You know, those beliefs are, they're outdated. They have no actual basis in reality. Um, there is no, <laughs> no proof that anyone could easily show me, you know, to my very eyes. The fact that these stories still permeate and, frankly, are freakishly common proves that the introduction of new technology and even some new understandings to the masses will not necessarily get rid of old problems and superstitions. So standards of evidence, facts, logic, and fairness are as important as ever. To avoid having a successful witch trial in which innocent people get brutalized, it pays to not let a personal appeal to the hypothetical jury circumvent the need for evidence and scientific fact as a gen general phenomenon. Another question everyone should ask, be it the hypothetical jury, prosecution, judge, or anyone else at such a cringy trial, um, you know, the cringy witch trial of your choice, should there be a trial at all? You know, boom, there is entry-level question, really the number one question. If we can try witches for casting spells, why can't we sue the Grim Reaper for all the death in the world? You know, why not? Why not sue death itself or something like that? Um, but the problem is, by the time you're at that point in the witch trial where you can ask about fantastical questions and try to prove people wrong, who will read any evidence carefully or hear your case? Are you seriously going to tell someone like Greg Locke, please read it carefully and consider the questions it poses to the jury? If you believe that this man, woman, child, animal was not guilty of these crimes, then you must act on your belief. Will someone like Greg Locke care about a thing called reasonable doubt? Does he even grasp the very basics of what that term means? So if you, dear listener, understand these questions, consider if your answer is that a person should not be convicted for witchcraft if they should be found not guilty of casting imaginary spells. You know, I mean... Let me repeat that again. Uh, if you understand those questions, consider if your answer is that a person should not be convicted for witchcraft, and if they should not be, f or be found not guilty of casting imaginary spells. It's funny that you would have to say that in sentence in this day and age, but apparently you still do. I could even repeat it a third time, but you know, whatever. If you, under, if you don't understand that, let's discuss why not. You know, I'm curious about, about why you would believe in demons and witches and bullshit like that. In that scene I mentioned over in India, we know who the guiltiest people likely are. Well, maybe likely is even an unfair word. In that case, they would be guilty. Um, because there was no... You know, there was no fair trial at all so you know they didn't even give it they didn't even give the person a chance you know what i'm saying so it was even it was even less fair than the average witch accusation anyway the uh, 1769 doctrine of william blackstone says the law holds that it is better that 10 guilty persons escape than that one innocent suffer so think about that and also think if you've ever seen the movie 12 Angry Men, think about one of the jurors in that trial. There's one scene where a character reveals his prejudice while discussing the trial, saying, How can you believe him knowing what he is? I lived among them all my life. You can't believe a word they say. So obviously people can be prejudiced. It's it's not always about, you know, like demons and witches. Let's, let's not... Uh, sidestep the general issue of prejudice and say it always has to be so extreme and fantastical you know sometimes you can lock somebody up 
uh, for life just because you don't like them. You know, you don't like the way they look. You might not like what they believe or what they think. And it, it might make you think, well, they must have done what they're accused of doing. You know, and that's obviously also not good. It might not be as dramatically bad as, you know, like just killing a witch, but it's still pretty bad. Quite bad. Also consider that if you are absolutely certain that something is true, you should generally be open to having your ideas challenged. And finally, people as a whole must understand that at a certain point, one's credibility has been seriously compromised. There's a saying often attributed to Voltaire. It's that anyone who can make you believe absurdities can make you commit atrocities. And that is exactly what this topic is about here. If we can become aware of all these things and apply common sense and critical thinking, I think fewer people will end up getting burned as witches or demons or falsely imprisoned or any number of things, you know, falsely accused. You know, we should save the demons and witches for horror movies, folks, and not add them to the horrors of real life. Anyway, have a nice day. Hopefully take my lessons here into account.